Okay, part two. Um, after my prenatal visit, I just noticed with the ultrasound, um, my baby waved. He waved at us just before I even knowing the gender. I found out his gender when I um, miscarried him, but he waved, and I still I got the ultrasound right here, and and as I noticed when we went to the ER compared to um um that was my first time no i went somewhere else after the er but it was my first time hearing his heartbeat and as i noticed his heartbeat was different every time and um my first time seeing him he was like um tossing and turning a little bit when i went to my prenatal visit it was like he had his hand waving like bye mommy this is gonna be my last time like you seeing me and y'all uh, it is this is it I'm trying not to show but he's waving his hand at us so fast forward the day of um, the day I started miss the day I miscarried him was like on a Thursday September the 14th I will never forget and it's so crazy um, I don't know if it's a spiritual thing or what but I remember exercising um, and later that night after my shower, normally when I take my showers, I I just, we have this moment. I talk to him because I have a daughter as well. Um, so this is our second child. But anyways, I, I had a feeling after I took a shower and I just felt like there was a disconnect. There was a disconnect. And I remember later, I bearing me because there's still mixed feelings and emotions and stuff but um i remember feeling this disconnection after taking my um my shower and taking my baby bath i sat down i didn't pay it no mind because i'm like i don't know i've been gassy and constipated i started having like light cramps aches and then when i went to the bathroom i noticed my blood flow increased a little but i figured that would happen because i had a pelvic exam and plus i was already bleeding so i knew it was it would get worse but not this bad. My blood was heavy. I started, what made me more concerned, my cramps and aches picked up. Consciously, I <clears throat> knew, I kind of figured it was like um, contractions. But then again, I don't know. I had a C-section with my first baby, so I wasn't expecting to have a vaginal birth with this baby. So I really couldn't, I still was confused. It started at seven that night. My cramps picked up like at eight. I tossed and turned. I was like thinking of everything in the world but that. Because I didn't want to believe that. In my mind, I kept hearing the doctors and everyone say, everything's okay. Your baby is growing well. And this and that. And I just kept it in my mind. I didn't think. I'm like, this is just all me. So I started texting Chris. This is at the last minute. This is when the pain picked up like around 8. I drank water. I laid down. I tossed and turned. I got my pregnancy pillow. All while still taking care of a toddler. So I thought I was getting through the pain, but it just picked up every year. So I went to the bathroom and I saw lots of blood. I saw blood clots. And around 8.20, I said, you know what? I can't, I can't take this pain no more. Chris, come and get me. I know you at work. I hated to do that, but he didn't care. He was like, I'm way more important. I wish you would have told me earlier. So once I sat down on the toilet, I just like, I'm like, I have to poop. I have to poop. I'm hurting really bad. Not knowing you're about to have this baby so i pooped a little i didn't want to poop because it's, i was still hurting as i was trying to get up and walk off i see more blood clots and um the pain was getting way worse more intense so i sat back down i said you know what i'm not leaving this bathroom to this cramping and pain go away so um i swear one more time y'all and um i just knew I just knew, I said, um, that's not poop. I saw my plug, my mucus plug, and then something else just slid slowly out of me. After the mucus plug, plug popped out, um, there was my baby, and I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't look at him. He was just laying there in the toilet with so much blood. I, I bled so much that I had to go straight to the um, ER. There was a lot of blood clots. I had to get a procedure done. Um, but um, yeah, 
Um, Chris made it home. I was in tears. Blood is everywhere. He is panicking. He rushed. He was like, everything's okay. Everything okay? I said, I was crying. I couldn't talk properly. I said, no, it's not. I said, go in the bathroom. And he went in the bathroom. And he just picked up the baby. He just, just in the panicking mode, not thinking into after we left the hospital. Uh, he just picked up our baby. He grabbed me some clothes and put me on some clothes. Cause I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding everywhere. I'm bleeding so much. Big, thick blood clots. Clots everywhere. He grabbed our baby, wrapped, wrapped him in a towel. And uh, we went to the ER. Blood is everywhere. Blood is still, I see. I still see blood when I, it's dried up now when I walk outside. Uh, where we live is on the concrete. But um, went to the ER. <sighs> um, I would say just being a black woman and treated for your pain. Like, I just, I just try, I want to do everything to not go to the ER because I know I have experiences and I have my trauma. So it just going to the ER and just being a black woman and I know and how how I get treated I can't speak for anyone else but I have a history of just trauma in the medical field but um there was just one nurse she was so oh my god rude she didn't care um I would say her name but I remember her name and um the other nurses and everyone else um, talking, having conversations, like, but the other people, you know, they, you know, and my doctor came in fast forward. He came in really quick. And once I left the ER, everything was great. The, the um, anesthesia guy, he was so sweet. Um, the other women upstairs, they was, they was very compassionate and empathetic and yeah, <laughs> but um, once I left the hospital, um, that's when it all sat in, and uh, I'm still in the healing and grieving process. I can say I am better in a way, but it's still going to take time. What just keep me calm is I know he's in a better place. I know he's resting, and I'm pretty sure he's not nowhere suffering, That, and I just felt like he was suffering, and and I just felt like he didn't want to have this human experience. It's too ghetto here. <laughs> but um, until we meet again, I love you, son. We love you, your sister, your dad. Um, you know, sometimes our expectations and um, planning it would it would really it hurts us really bad because we plan and we expect, but God has the last say so. And um, I hope sharing this story with some of you women and bringing awareness to this because this should be like talked about a lot. We should speak up. We shouldn't hold it in. The more we hold it in, the more we hurt ourselves. So I hope this helped you. Or if you experienced this, please comment down below how are you dealing with it. Um, and I pray for us all that we all find peace and happiness. And, um, yeah we continue to live life is short and life is precious but i want to share with you all and i wanted to this really helps me um so yeah have a great day y'all